Welcome to Inspira TV, where we create a fusion of the mind and the soul. I am your host, Paloma Greer, and I am super excited to bring this TV program to you. We are an independent bilingual show dedicated to create content to feed your mind, to feed your soul, to provoke thought, to raise consciousness, and also hopefully inspire you to live to your fullest potential. And today I'm going to take you on an amazing journey to explore the minds and the souls of incredible artists that live in the Chicagoland area. What are they saying with their art? What are they expressing through their soul? Painting, poetry, and whatnot. Let's see what we found in the streets of Chicago. Let's take a look. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Local artist and muralist in Chicago, and Sandra Anton Georgi. This is actually our first mural that we're doing together. We're collaborating on this piece. Um, we've both done other murals individually and with other groups. And Sandra's actually one of those artists that were participating, but um, years ago. <laughs> well, this is. Um, our take is our extension, so we decided that we wanted to do a piece that celebrated women, women of different cultures, um, of different groups, and kind of showcase, you know, our skills, what we do together. Hey, I'm uh, K.O. Razen. I'm a, a citizen of the world, uh, a poet, uh, artist, uh, art curator, I'm a father. Liberal-minded! You've been blinded, looking for true democracy, you can't find it. We're stuck in this, bureaucratically binded. The system is broke, and that's the way they designed it. You're feeling a little strange, this ain't the change that you hope for. Starting to wonder if it matters, who you f vote for. Capitalism can't exist without a class war. So give me a job, or give me the money out the cash drawer. You think your efforts make a difference when politics are corrupted by corporate interests? And things won't change one damn bit if it keep on sucking on Uncle Sam. It remains constant when Congress is always in conflict and corrupt governors become convicts. We got to get the people together. We've been trying to do some good, but we got to do better. I'm inspired by all kinds of different things, uh, things that happen in my own life, from my past, my present, or where I see myself in my future, or the world around me. Ever war, in time, the universe will bleed. I'm here to disperse the seeds with a burst of speed. I'm gonna take this adventure to whatever end that it might lead me to. Cause there's still so much left that I need to do Maybe we should spend our days doing a good deed or two If the world needs heroes then maybe we should breed a few If you in a tunnel then maybe you should follow the light Get live, it's your time at the Apollo tonight My name is K.O. Razen, Obsidian Mojo I'm down with Crucible Culture but for this I'm solo I'm riding on apocalypse horses Running through obstacle courses Trying to get paid in full and being pulled by opposite forces Good versus evil. Power, the power to, the to the people. I'm both a father and son. One day I'm gonna die, but lately, really doesn't bother me none. What good is love if it's not properly done? I'll say again, what good is love if it's not properly done? So let's visit erotic cities, inhabited by exotic pretties. We could dance in the streets to banging beats and recite melodic ditties. Do you want to be my fairy girl? Let me taste the cherry pearl. I'm the hardest rapper since Ice Cube had a fucking Jerry curl. And this is scary world. You know I'm a weird dude. I'm sorry if there were ever times when I appeared rude. A lot of shit tends to strike me deep down in my psyche. It's highly unlikely I ever buy a pair of Nikes. Wanna check my dues? I've crashed, sweated, and bled on mics. 
I've left trails of cypher aftermaths with rappers' heads on spikes. But I'd really rather leave here feeling joyous. I'm both manly and boyish. Step through the portal and let this Adam Warlock take you on a voyage. And open your mind to some of the things you might have been hoping to find. Have faith in yourself to move forward. Leave the Pope in behind. All the world's a stage. I'm trying to watch some shows on it. If you don't like the naked truth, then put some clothes on it. I was born at the beginning of the fourth quarter of the 20th century. It wasn't that many rappers when I was going to Raymond Elementary. And I've had to put up with some of the craziest imaginable. Y'all hipsters doing the same shit I was doing long before it became fashionable. And now that he raised in poverty on comics and Greek mythology, I don't keep up with all the latest slang terminology. When I was young, I tried to walk around low key. To me, LL Cool J could f with Cool Mo D. But you know me, I want to strike in each and every ear. Step to me with bad intentions, you need to strap on some heavier gear. Do you want to be stuck in the middle when the forces of hell and heaven clash? I'm more of an outsider than Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. So I copy time, the water's rocky, but I'ma keep in control and kick some of the most realest you can feel deep in your soul. L -l 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 Life is in the living, receiving is in the giving. It's all here for the taking. We're all history in the making. I've, I've just now gotten to the point where I feel uh, somewhat comfortable acknowledging myself as an activist. Most recently, I went to uh, El Salvador with the Pilgrim Lutheran Church and School on a mission trip where uh, I was helping uh, install solar panels uh, to people who live in the jungle who have no energy. Uh, so we were installing like LED uh, lights so they can have light and um, battery so they can have some power. I, that, that just was always important to me, to be doing the work, to be active uh, before I said I was an activist. Leo, thank you so very much for being with us. Welcome to Inspira TV. I'm glad, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, it is such a pleasure. I could not wait to have you on the show. I couldn't wait to be on the show. I, oh. I've been following your work and I gotta say, I hear a lot of heart and a lot of emotion and a lot of power in your lyrics. Happy where you are. Can I talk to your heart to touch the hardest parts? If you know you meant for more than me more. And if you don't know what I mean, then dream more. So tell me a little bit about that um, and I'll definitely ask you about World of Fire because I think that's what I felt the most. Right, right, right. So tell me about those lyrics. What were you going through when you wrote this? A lot of music in general, specifically rap in my case, um, gets criticized for not having a lot of depth in its lyrics. A lot of people are like, well, it's, you know, rappers aren't saying much or most rappers aren't saying much these days. Nowadays so kind of, anyways, right? Alright, so I wanted to try and challenge that and change it and, you know, keep it clean, keep it positive, you know what I mean? And you are from Peru, right? Yeah, I am. I was born here, but yeah, my parents are Peruvian, yeah. So I saw you shot that video uh, in Peru, it was yeah. beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, where does that creativity come from? Uh, is it, you know, a collective effort or are you just naturally creative? Where does that come from? Uh, the director that shot the World on Fire music video, his name is George Solis of Soul Films. Um, he came up with the idea where we were trying to innovate. I had never done a music video. And so I asked him, I was like, hey, That was excellent. That was yeah. way too good. Yeah, so I was like, what do you think we should do? What do you suggest? Like, I, I want to make my first music video different. And um, he was like, you know what? Uh, where are you from? And I was like, my parents are from Peru. He's like, we should shoot it there. So he came with me and we shot the video um, documentary style and we went to different locations, what Peru's known for. We kind of wanted to show um, the beauty of the country 
and then it went well with the lyrics. It just went perfectly. He's like, you know, that's where I'm from. First music video. The lyrics are kind of like uplifting. You're in the country your parents are from. So it kind of all came together. Tell me a little bit about how do you stay inspired and connected with yourself to be able to produce this type of lyrics and mm -hmm. this overall concept? Uh, you know what? It, a lot of it has to do with uh, the band I have. Um, everyone's energy in the same room is always like it's infectious like you know I'll work with my producer on something and he'll be stuck on an idea and then I'll say something and but then I'm stuck the drummer will say something and then the guitarist will say something so it's like when you're in a room full of eight people it's kind of hard to run out of ideas so. but I think you were definitely that Latino spice that, that the whole band needed right, right? yeah yeah so uh, at yeah. that point is a perfect band. <laughs> yeah no I, yeah, I agree I mean it worked out just fine too because like like I said, there's so many different um, ethnicities in the band that it makes for like a very interesting endeavor. You know what I mean? There's like uh, Latinos, there's Asians, there's African Americans in the band. So it's like this whole like, whoa, you know what I mean? I, I, I like it that way. So what's next for you and the band? So what, what projects are you currently working on? Uh, what's going on? I'll shoot my next video in London and Paris in October. I'm glad I got you back! Yeah. <laughs> because by the time you come back you're gonna be too famous. So yes, he was here first and he's speed at the way. Well, we would like to congratulate you for the Thank great, you. great work that you're doing. It's not only inspirational, but there's got a lot of spirit and, and a lot of soul. And I give you props. Thank you for representing Latino so oh, well. Thank you so much for having me. And um, it's really beautiful to have such a diverse uh, band. And yeah. I just love you guys. Oh, and thank you. Where can they find you? Uh, where, uh, where can they find your music? Um, oh, everything is very easy. It's at ariusmusic.com. There you have it. Uh, you can find the music there. Uh, otherwise, you can see it at the bottom of the screen. So uh, thank you again. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. And hopefully, you'll come back and visit us soon. Oh, I hope, hopefully, you guys can have me. So, all right. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Pretty amazing minds, right? I told you it was going to be an amazing journey. Well, we continue on and one of our guest reporters, Mari Rivera, is going to take us also in the streets of Chicago, where you can become an instant artist. Let's check it out. Well, we are still in Tilton, and guess what I just found? I found this really cool place called the Surreal Rabbit, where you come in and they actually make you into artists, da 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 da! And I am here <laughs> with the owners, and actually the artists too, of the Surreal Rabbit. It's Alejandra and Kira. Thank you so much for having us here. Today. Anyone can come in and sign up for a class on our website, okay. um, which is surrealrabbit.com, and uh, we offer step-by-step -step classes, um, for example, our Viva La Frida here, which is one of the most popular paintings that we have, and we've been teaching this one for about two years now. We've had, for example, Frida with a Chicago flag background. Oh. We've had Frida that looks like a punk rocker. We've had Frida um, that looks like straight up Chola Frida with the big hoop earrings. <laughs> wow. The black liner, big old Diego tattooed on her. So you can always customize your piece. Wow. And it's an original because you painted it. And let me tell you, everybody, that the most important line, it's BYOB. So don't forget to bring your beer, your wine, whatever it is that you guys drink and come and have some fun. Tequila. The comadres <laughs> always bring their tequila. <laughs> uh, you know, and it's all Heavy the classes duty. are bilingual. Okay. So, um, if you register in a lot of the neighborhood, you know, speaks primar primarily Spanish, yes. they'll come in and they'll bring their moms, they'll bring their tias, they'll bring their abuelitas that don't speak any English. Perfect. We can actually break down the image and translate for them. In so Spanish? They can, in Spanish, so they can be part of the fun because, you know, we. First and foremost, we're here as part of the community and we want to cater to the community so we're giving back.
Have you guys ever wondered where does creativity come from and why do we humans have that need to express it? Well, Dr. Marina Costina, our expert in energy and connections, will explain in a very creative way what creativity is all about next. Hello and welcome to my segment Wired at Heart. And today we're going to talk about how creativity relates to your soul and to your spirit. Einstein said, when I examine myself and my methods of thought, I come close to the conclusion that the gift of imagination has meant more to me than any talent for absorbing absolute knowledge. Imagination is incredibly connected to creativity. It taps into the realm of the unknown and envisions things that are not yet a part of the material world. Creativity allows a person to bring these forms into one's life. Interestingly, Animals also have creativity. Yep, Marushka can draw a kitty picture. But seriously, research shows that creativity is not a natural talent and can be developed. And it also shows that creativity is an important ingredient for animal survival. For me, creativity requires getting out of your own way, shutting down your mind and allowing intuition and imagination lead the way. Neuroscientific studies on what is going on in the brain during jazz improvisation artists and ra rappers used MRI scans of their brains, which showed that during their creative process, the areas of the brain responsible for self-monitoring, conscious control and self-criticism were suppressed. Other studies show that when people were involved in creative process, they produce alpha waves that are usually associated with relaxation and sleep. Interestingly, one of the most creative artists of all times, Salvador Dali, used dreams as his source of inspiration. But not just dreams. He actually used several techniques for dream control to enhance his artistic method. One of such techniques was slumber with the key. This is a very brief nap, less than a quarter of a second long, that activates the stage between being awake and asleep, where sensations and perceptions of the day show up as hypnagogic images, so predominant in Dallas paintings. On the energetic level, our creativity lies in our fifth energetic center, fifth chakra. Those who have the center open have the universal energy flowing freely and tap into the subconscious mind to bring something from nowhere to now here. Compare this picture of the blocked fifth chakra with an open fifth chakra. The right image is the image of a singer. And I want to conclude with the words of Buckminster Fuller who said, Everyone is born a genius. It's the process of living that geniuses them. So let's breathe life into our geniuses. Get out of your own way, get out of your head, and let the intuition guide your path. All right, well, coming up next, we have the Bansky of Pilsen. His name is Jasso, and we're gonna get to meet his art, which is all over the streets of Chicago, and it's got us talking. Let's meet up next on Expressions of the Soul. Expressions of the Soul is brought to you by a basement. What happens on the daily was not a fan of daily, and their corruption is a product of consumption. Machine politics, hood joblessness, it's obvious we Street art has transformed a little bit in a sense where it's become something where you have a lot of local artists and a lot of graffiti artists that have been working in the area or surrounding areas. But now we have a, a wave of artists coming from different different areas, out of the, out of out of the town, uh, throughout the country. Some are coming in from even outside of the country. Uh, so there's a, a large, diverse image and uh, change in styles happening, uh, which is always going to happen with graffiti or with street art. Right now, we, we get lots of good examples of uh, graffiti writing, things with uh, aerosol 
and you, you get to see names and you get to see uh, words or, or phrases. Um, and that used to be a little less common with some of the pre-existing murals where you would see, you would see phrases or slogans almost, but it wouldn't, be, uh, it wouldn't be so specific to a crew or, a per or one single person. It would be mostly a, about a movement happening. Um, so the movement still exists and now it, it's just changing because there's different artists involved, there's different uh, ways that people perceive the street art. Um, so in particular, maybe one artist that, that I think has really stood out and has kind of tried to find a way to merge both things and he's still growing. Hasso has been really working with in, including a lot of imagery that's specific to uh, popular culture but the same in the same time still incorporates a lot of uh, of uh, Mexican imagery and I grew up with these images you know the Zapata images Frida Diego Rivera I fell in love with with the whole idea of pop art so I you know I combined those two things together which you know the Mexican arts and you know the popular culture I did the, the, the Jedi Zapata representing a, a, what you could, you would say a modern revolutionary you know nowadays with the immigration and you know racism against you know against Latinos not just Mexicans and or you know other other um, illegal Im immigrants so I, I did the Zapata for that, and um, uh, then you have the the the, the Frida. I wanted to do something. Um, use her image to represent, you know, something beautiful, and 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 still something young. And that's why I added the the, the Hello Kitty, and I kept using the, the image of Frida to kind of, you know, make people from a Latino background feel comfortable. You know, with these images, and, and and feel proud about themselves. You, some of them, some of the kids nowadays don't know. You know, the the, the history or the the history of, of Mexico's um, arts and, and and their famous artists, and they, they can't relate to these images. So when they see them, uh, you know, with these popular uh, culture images, kind of investigate and see, you know, ask around, and and then they find out what it is, and and it, it becomes more meaningful to them. You know. And I'm a stranger in a strange land Up late at night watching reruns of gangland Dreaming of being the kingpin But in the meantime When it came to weed pasting I kind of used the whole idea of uh, uh, Using the, the, the black and white image and, 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 and putting it on a paper and putting it out there Whether it's, you know, a freestyle with, uh, by hand Or designed on a computer and then printed one of my biggest influences, I guess you would say, is Shepard Fairey when it comes to weed-based art. And I fell in love with the whole idea of, you know, uh, doing or making an, Im an image on paper or expressing yourself on paper and putting it out there. He was putting, to, putting a lot of things together himself. He was trying to see what worked and what didn't, but, if the, but he wasn't thinking about this, but this is going to be the larger benefit later on. I think he definitely was a very impulsive artist and that came from his uh, graffiti background where he was used to going somewhere overnight, painting, putting something on a wall, and then uh, you know by the next morning, next day, people would get to see it. So he approached his wheat paste I think in the same way where he would just go out, put them up, and think about it later. <laughs> so, but that, that was a very I think that was very strength, strength, uh, a strength for his work because that uh, a lot of people got to see just how fast he worked. I never really been visual with my art, um, so I always really re respect and appreciate people that that are. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's definitely a, a connection with, with, with from the graffiti culture to what Hasso does and, and the hip hop and everything. There's definitely in the same realm. From Clarence Dar with a blago, the city of Chicago. From Richard J to Richard M, which of them? This shit for M, neither one see the sun. That's how I shine when I rhyme, and I'ma be the one. I stand with my art became political once I started noticing things around my friends, what they were going through. Uh, when it comes to um, immigration issues and gang violence issues. 
there was this one memory I have that I'll never forget. In, in school, I, I believe it was uh, science or biology. And we, we got this news about one of, one of my friends that he had gotten shot, you know, coming to school and shot and killed. And we were barely, you know, sixth graders. And hearing one of our friends dying, you know, getting shot, it, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of heavy. I guess we, we as, a, as a community in that, in that school, all the students that went to that school, we kind of got away from all the violence and, and, and you know, the, the, the gunshots and the, the bad memories through art. And the teachers, they knew that, you know, it was a positive a feeling for, for, for that school and that community. Um, recently, it, it happened again with another friend, and it's, it's this shit over again. You know, it's gang violence. You know, and it's just people don't learn. I don't understand what the what the infatuation with killing someone for you know a territory, two blocks that you feel the need to defend by killing you know people that look like gangbangers or you know it's just dumb that it just makes sense to me. Drugs and stuff like that, so I kind of, like, I refuge myself in art, you know? I want the top spot. I went to top spot. What do you guys think? Pretty cool, right? I am so, so, so happy that we have a part two next episode, so don't forget to tune in. Sundays at 1 p.m. right here on Channel 25. Well, guys, let me leave you with this. I think we're all artists. We all have that artist inside of us. By nature, we need to express ourselves. And I know that we get so caught up with the everyday life, with work, with the bills, with drama. But remember, you have to nurture your soul too. So whatever it is that you do, whether if it is poetry, whether if it is writing, dancing, feed your soul and make sure you express yourself through your creativity. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was a pleasure having you. I look forward to having you on next episode. Remember, feed your mind, feed your soul, and stay inspired. Until next time.